Yesterday, we looked at uh, the some of the introductory materials who wrote uh, the book of Acts and um, why do we believe that this is written by Luke, the doctor. We also looked at the plausible date. It is in the early 60s. That is a plausible date. We looked at the purpose. Right today, we need to look at the introduction. All right. So, what? How this class will go? Well, how I am planning to do our studies this time. So, I want your cooperation. All right. I want all of you to read. Okay. Acts. Uh, you know, Acts chapter. Take your Bibles to Acts chapter one. All right. Let's read verse one. Um, uh, Luke 1, so in the NIV, you read the first account I composed, right? Of course, in the original scroll, it was one, but it was written as two accounts. Um, maybe in, yes, in NIV, the former book, that is a word used, right? Uh, this is Luke. The forum book is Luke. Luke and Acts are really one book with one preface, right? That preface is given in Luke itself. This is the continuation, but it is the second part of the first book. First book is primarily related to Jesus and his life ministry, where a second book after the death of Jesus, how things are, all right? Now, let's look at verse four. Can one of you please read verse four? Anyone? Please open your Bibles, all of you, please. Anyone, please. Let me see who will read. I'm waiting. Gathering them together, he commanded them to not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard from me. Okay, that's enough. The gift, okay, the gift that my, my father has promised, gift my father promised. What is this gift? All right, this is a, this is, this is a, a specific gift. And I would say this is connected to baptism of the Holy Spirit. Maybe I wanted to add that one here. It is baptism of the Holy Spirit that that the spirit is coming, coming of the spirit. There is something that father has promised. There is going to be a new ministry for the spirit, right? Uh, when, by the way, when we talk about coming of the spirit on the day of Pentecost, we need to ask a question, was not the Holy Spirit on this earth before that? Yes. So what is this coming actually means? This is coming to begin a new ministry, right? Something new has been promised. Where it is being promised? It is promised here in all these verses, right? So that is being that Holy Spirit will come. Now let's look at verse five. Verse five. Can one of you please read verse five? Please. Yeah, one place. Anyone? For John baptized with the water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. All right. So he says, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So what does that mean? 
what does that this indicate what is baptism with the holy spirit you will be baptized with the holy spirit now you will see this is the same terminology in our gospels right we already discussed about this one if you want to know matthew 3:11 mark 1:8 and luke 3:16 in all these passages baptism of the holy spirit is mentioned right now when it took place it took place the baptism of the holy spirit took place on the day of pentecost right on the day of pentecost because this verse clearly suggests not many days within few days you will be baptized so another term in the book of acts that you need to explain will be is this one baptism of the holy spirit right now i have given a small chart that when you get time go uh, look at it uh, and maybe a, a timeline of of um, events of the book of acts maybe a timeline has been given here all right uh, that you can just look into when you get time now let's look at verse 6 verse 6 right please those of you who have the bible please open it and read it all right yeah we, will, we i want you to read quickly or you know yeah go ahead in the gather so when they met go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead so when they met together they asked him lord are you at this time going to rest restore the kingdom to israel all right now so here is a question are you okay are you restore okay look at okay lord at this time are you restoring the kingdom to israel two things are to be looked at here number one so that means kingdom is not there this has to be restored they are asking is this time at this time when you are here are you going to do that if you are the messiah remember in the old testament this is promised right a, a kingdom will be coming now are you the one are you going to do that right now so a kingdom clearly a reference in the future a future kingdom right a future kingdom let's look at verse 8 verse 8 but you will receive the power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witness both in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and even to the remote part of the earth all right so there you see the word witnesses it looks like that is a kind of theme in the book of acts it's about 39 times in various forms the word witness comes there right as the more uh, that's to look at let's go to verse 10 now then they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them yeah men dressed in white right so we all i hope we all understand them are angels right they look like men they are dressed in white right now let's look at verse 11 verse 11 verse 11 all right men of galilee they said why do you stand here looking into the sky this same jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back yeah why the way you have why the word men of galilee is used right by the angels the men of galilee so all of the original 12 apostles were from galilee except one except the judas the rest of all them were from galilee and judas now dead. so that's the so men of galilee laven were from galilee all right so 
that is to be looked at, that is to be um, noted here. We are now looking at the full number of the apostles, right? Full complement of apostles, um, verse 12 to 26. So verse 13, let's look at verse 13 now. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, okay. and Matthew. Thank you. All right. It is in some translations, uh, for example, in an IV, you have, they went upstairs to the room, and some other translations have upper room. What is that? Right? So this is the well-known room. Either this is a Passover room, all right? Passover room, or it could be the room where Christ appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. It is something well known. And maybe even Luke chapter 24, yeah, slightly Luke explains. Or it could be the house of Mary, the mother of John. So there are three options. Which is this room? There are three options. We are not really sure which is this room, actually. Okay. That's about the room, upper room, or room in the upstairs. Room in the upstairs. Well, that is also to be kept in mind in those days. And even in those days, there are double story buildings, you know, um, even in those days. Let's look at verse 16 now, choosing Mat Mat uh, Matthias, choosing Matthias for Judas. Let's look at verse 16. Let's read verse 16. And said, brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas. Yes. All right. Now, uh, there are, this is clearly mentioned in the, uh, in the Old Testament, right? So, let's look at here. Scripture had to be fulfilled concerning Judas. Right. Now, Judas' trackery was not an embarrassment to God's program. You see? This is not an embarrassment. Why? Because scripture predicted that early, right? For example, uh, if you look at verse 20, we, we don't have to read verse 20. Uh, that those two passages that are recorded there is one from Psalm 65, uh, 69, verse 25. The other is from Psalm 109, right? Uh, it was the defector Judas, not his death, that demanded his replacement. Okay, why? There was another person, not because Judas died. It is simply he was defected. There was no effort to replace James when he was martyred. Look at that one. They did not replace James because he died very early in the church history. So they don't replace an apostle because he died. They replaced him because of because of his sin. Jesus predicted that at the renewal of all things, the apostle will sit on 12 thrones judging 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, so you have 12 men appointed here. Let's look at verse 26. I am, you know, trying to read verses that have things to need, things need clarifications. Verse then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. Yes, counted with the 11 apostles. So casting lots, right? Uh, it was, it was, a um, lot was an Old Testament procedure. Right, usually choosing the scapegoat. Remember, um, which, you know which God should be slaughtered, which is God should be sent to the wilderness. Uh, so there is no further instance of the it's used by Christians. We don't see that Christians later using. Um, so therefore, there was an issue in selecting Matthias. What was that? Some people said that the apostles heard. And that Paul was really to be the 12th apostle. 
Yeah. A lot of people think in that way, friends. Uh, no, Matthias was not a legitimate use. This is a wrong practice. But note that there is no indication in the text that casting Lord was a mistake, was wrong. There is no indication. Maybe Jesus may have told them to do this, right? And Paul did not meet all the qualifications to be counted among the 12, right? Um, he did not meet all the qualification at that time, right? And therefore, uh, and not only that, now quite interesting, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 now. 1 Corinthians 15 for a second. Verse 5. Look at the verse 5. And that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. All right. Then to the 12. It seems that Paul accept the 12. You know that this is appearance after the death. It is not in this 12, Judas is not there, right? Judas is not there. So it is Paul accept the selection of that. Then uh, what about Paul? Is he not an apostle? Yes. Paul says about his apostleship, right? What is that? Look at verse 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse, verse 8. As and the last of all, go ahead. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. Yeah, yes. Abnormally born. Not normal. My case is not normal, Paul says. I am an apostle, that is true. But I'm not in that ordinary category of apostle that are that meet qualifications. I was born abnormal. It was unique. All right. So that is needs to be uh, looked at here about Paul's apostleship. So there is no place that seems suggest that Matthias selection was wrong. There is no one. It looks like it is it was the right selection. Now Coming out of the Holy Spirit for a new ministry. Coming out of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's come to chapter two. Acts chapter two, verse one. All right, now, wait a minute. Uh, the verse begins with the word when the day of Pentecost came, right? The day of Pentecost. So I hope and hope that you all know what does that mean, right? Pentecost, it simply means fifth. What is fifth? Hmm? 50 days after Passover. 50 days already after the Passover feast. And this is an upcoming feast that comes very close by. Now let's look at verse. Let's read. Uh, let's read now verse 1 onwards. Let's read. Can one of you please read? Acts chapter 2, sir. Yes. From verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes. Wait a minute. A few things to be looked at here. All right. Uh, baptism of the Spirit. I, all right. I say 
what is taking place in Acts chapter 2 is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do we understand that it is baptism of the Holy Spirit? Anyone? Can any, how, how do you know that they this spoke, is baptism of the Holy Spirit? They spoke in tongues with the... Well, that's uh, not the evidence. How do you know that this is baptism of the Holy Spirit taking place? Like tongues of fire. Hmm? Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 4 says that all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Yes, but how do we know that this is baptism of the Holy Spirit that actually was taking place? Let's bring the verses together, right? If you if you see chapter 1, verse 8, where Jesus told them to stay yeah. in Jerusalem. Verse 5. Look at verse 5. Chapter yeah. 1, verse 5. What is that? Verse 5 of Acts or? Acts, Acts. After verse 3 says, yeah. they saw tongues of something like tongues of fire. Well, uh, but does it chapter mean... Does it mean that that is, it is the, how do we know, how can we confirm that, yes, we can, we see the evidences, we can see the evidences, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, that is also that passage says, but does that passage say, this is baptism of the Holy Spirit? That passage no, doesn't like... say, but somewhere else yeah. it says, where Acts chapter 1 Verse five, five. I, verse 5. Yeah. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Right. Look at that verse. Within few days. So this is a reference to, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples before his ascension. So Jesus ascended after 40 days. Pentecost comes 50th day. So this a few days, the greatest event that is going to take place is what? Baptism of the Holy Spirit. So how can we, con okay. So there is the indication that on, on the day of Pentecost, baptism of the Holy Spirit took place for the first time. How do we confirm that one? That this was actually baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do we confirm? Eh? Come to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. There is a, another verse that confirms that this was baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 11, verse 15, 15 and 16. 15. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. One second. What is he referring now to? He is referring to the events at Cornelius' house where Holy Spirit, you know, there was baptism, the Holy Spirit took place. People started to speak in tongues. Now in chapter 11, Peter reporting to Jerusalem church what happened, right? There he says, as I began to speak, Holy Spirit fell upon them. Who is the them? At those who gathered at Cornelius' house. And he says, just as he did upon us at the beginning. What is the beginning? That is Acts chapter 2. That is the beginning he's referring to. Normally anyone can understand. Otherwise you should be uh, someone who is really heretic to deny that one. 
And then he says, I remembered the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, so Peter says that not only Acts 2, but Acts 10 even also is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? So it is the way to confirm that the baptism of the Holy Spirit took place for the first time. Right? In Acts chapter 2. But, but, when it occurred for the first time, right, the evidences were completely miraculous in nature. You see? It is miraculous in nature. All right, what are the evidences you see, physical evidence, all right? What do you see? Let's look back again, Acts chapter 2, verse 3, that we read. Acts 2, verse 3. This is what we, verse 2 and 3. Um, in verse 2, what do you read? There came from heaven noise like a rushing wind. The question is this. Right? Question is this. Was there a wind? Anyone? It was says there a wind? Was there a violent, violent blowing wind? Was there a wind? Yes, sir. Eh? I, want, I, I wanted to know how you read a text. Was there a wind? Came from heaven. Was there, was there a wind? Pastor, there's no wind. Yeah. But it says a All sound right. like blowing wind. There's no wind. There is. There was no wind. Was there a wind? What, what was there? There was a sound. noise, noise. Like a violent rushing wind. There, so the miracle is this. Without a wind, there was a noise like a wind blows. You see? No wind. Right? We need to be careful when, when we read. Right? No wind. All right? And what the... the so it's actually a noise came. But the noise was like a wind. And what it did, this is a special noise. It's not a noise that is usually comes everywhere. Well, you know, it is a, it's a noise. It filled a whole house where they were sitting. This, this, this voice, this noise filled the house. You see, it's a huge voice or noise. It just filled the house. All right. Then we read and appear to them tongues of fire distributing them uh, themselves and they rested on each of them. All right. The question is, were they a, were they a fire? Were they a fire? What well, was they a fire? Yeah. No. <laughs> there was no fire. All right. Uh, not fire, but but it is like fire-like. Fire-like tongues. Maybe, maybe, maybe when the fire comes, that uh, when the fire blows up, you see that image of a tongue shape, image of the fire wall. Maybe that one. There was no fire, but it, you know, tongues, it said tongues as a fire. Well, we don't know uh, what are that's the maybe what is the meaning, but uh, it is it could be it could be the divine presence in, like a burning bush and pillow of fire. At that time, God's presence was there, a specific presence. Could it be? Could be. We don't know. We don't know. All right, but some, some they visual, are miracles. Some visual. No, no, you're muted. Yeah. Some visual element was there. Yeah. Uh, 
that separated and came to rest on each of uh, absolutely but it was not fire right there it is said appear to them tongues maybe the shape of tongues as a fire so maybe like a flames of fire that appear that uh, like uh, like sorry like flames of fire and it distributing them so rested on each of them maybe an image something like we don't know this is a miracle friends we don't know don't equate that with ordinary things that is going on here in the most christian down all right again that's number that's the one we need to look at now verse 4 we see they were filled with the holy spirit right they were what so baptism also of the holy spirit takes place and they were also filled with the holy spirit filling has taken place even the old testament is not a new thing but what is this filling i already explained this one in pneumatology i don't have to explain again there are two types of filling in the new testament there are two times and there are two different greek words used for that filling one is a filling with the plurao right the another one is pimblemi two greek words right now uh, you see this filled with the holy spirit not only here in chapter 4 verse 8 and 31 and other places in the book of acts you see this filling wallace says it is to be noted that neither verb filled nor the case of following the verb are the same in ephesians 5 18. why we use the word words Ephesians 5 18. What is the significance? What is the significance of Ephesians 5 18? Let's look at Ephesians 5 18. Ephesians 5 18. Okay, can you read, please? Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit. And then what do you read underneath? Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. All right. And, and of course, always giving thanks and things like that. So uh, that is a different here. It is the word primblemi is used. All right, uh, this is, so what the filling in a fashion is something that believers ought to have on a daily basis. Whereas filling in the acts, not something has to be repeated on a daily basis regularly in our lives. This is a different types of filling. Ephesians chapter 5, 18 is not connected to not there's nothing it has to do with the tongue speaking right but and ephesians 5 18 the filling is commanded whereas acts in the book of acts filling is not a commanded one it is automatically happens right Pimblemi, never commanded nor it is related to our sanctification the filling in the book of Acts is not a commanded, not, to, not an experience that we ought to have on a daily basis. Whereas filling in the book of Ephesians is to have on a daily basis, it is commanded. So what is the, what is the filling in the book of Acts? Filling in the book of Acts is a special imbuing, special strengthening of the spirit for a particular task. Right? A particular task. It is similar to spirit ministry in the Old Testament. 
Furthermore, every time the K is used to indicate that the content of the filling is genitive in case. You know, if you look at various cases in Greek grammar, we have nominative that is subjective, genitive that is possessive, then there is dative and accusative, which are part of the objective case. Then there is vocative case in Greek, Greek grammar. So it is, it is said that the filling in the book of Acts is used, the content of the filling is in the genitive, not a dative. All right? So how uh, Witherington explains, here Luke is surely using the phrase filled with the spirit to not to discourse about Peter's sanctification level, not a dative or spiritual experience, but to indicate that like the prophets of old, Peter was speaking what? He was going to speak God's word, prompted, guided in what he would say by the spirit. This is why Luke uses the phrase elsewhere indicating prophetic character of the speaker when this filling occurs. This is not a filling that believers ought to have on a daily basis. Rather, this is specific occurrences, specific filling. That, uh, and remember, if you look at that, that filling did not occur all the time in the life of Peter, right? They, they be, they, if this is how it says, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues, began to speak in God's word, speak God's word. That's how you read. So it is connected to prophetic utterances, connected to God's word. This filling. It is not something that takes place every day, daily, on the daily basis, every day, every time in the life of a believer. That filling is in the book of Ephesians. We are, we are controlled by the Spirit as we seek to learn and obey God's word in various aspects of life. We are controlled by the Spirit in obedience of scripture, in obedience of scripture, obedience of spirit's words. That is a different types of spelling, right? Often people who read our English Bible may not differentiate this difference, but we need to, right? A different kind of filling in the book of Acts from Ephesians. 